Welcome to the Metals 100 coverage for the PDAC 2024 in Toronto, Canada. We have the president of PDAC, Dr. Wayman Godi, here with us here. How are you doing, Way? I'm doing fine, thanks, Gilbert. And so is the convention. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I just flying yesterday. It's been uh, it's been a blast so far here to, today. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So maybe I just start off by talking about your your tenure here in PDAC. I know you served here for for a few years in the uh, vice president and now the president. So what kind of goals that you set out before and that you have achieved? And maybe you could share some of that those goals with us here today. That's a good question because when I uh, was elected president, uh, one of the things I, I noticed after be, starting to serve at first as a second vice president was that uh, the all the documents that relate to how we do business 10 years out of date and they needed updating. So I, I spent most of my first two or three years working with some very talented other people as well, like Karen Reese, who's going to be following me as president in one year and three days time. And uh, we spent a lot of time taking the bylaws, the terms of reference for the committees and all those documents to tell you how to run the, run the organization on a day to day basis. And we got them approved by the board of directors. That was the toughest part. <laughs> and uh, I was also one of the people who came up with the five year plan for the, uh, the PDAC, uh, which we implemented last year. And uh, what I'm looking forward to completing my term here is, is continuing to implement that five year strategic plan. So, so what, what kind of changes in the convention itself this year compared to last year? I know noticed the main change for me is the weather. It's much warmer <laughs> here in Toronto than most of the years I had before, especially last year we had got a bit of a snow in here. And so, so do, do, do you have any, any sort of uh, minor or, or major changes here this year? Well, what I, I think the most exciting change is that we have something called the Arrow, which is a car uh, put together by the Canadian Auto Parts Manufacturer Group. And uh, the, the, this is a concept car which shows that all of the components for making a, an emissions free or low emissions vehicle are available here in Canada. And you can go up to this car and touch it and see what a car of the future might look, might look like, especially made in Canada. So that's one of the changes. Another one has been uh, at the, uh, the floor of the investors exchange. Interviews like this often used to be held in, in different rooms upstairs. They're mostly down here on the uh, investors exchange floor now. So I also noticed from your vast experience in the mining industry, in terms of the very various role that you play in your directors from a lot of uh, mining companies, junior companies as well, and you have field geologists, analysts, economists for firms. So what are some or well, one of your uh, favorite uh, positions or role that you enjoy the most? That's a very good question because uh, I, I have an answer of two of them. <laughs> uh, if, as a field geologist, I continue to be interested in field geology and I've just come back from Iceland looking at the volcano that's just erupted there. So that's you can't get more field worky than seeing the earth <laughs> yes. erupting. And number two, economists, well, that's help me make some money on the market being an economist. So that that's another favorite activity. Yeah, it's for the audience who don't know the difference between the field geologist and just the geologist. So make sure you are aware that the field geologist, you have to go to places that you that most of you probably uh, won't dare to go to. So. So please. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, I think that's one of the ways we encourage people to look into field geology as a career. Say, you will go places that Instagram has never been. Yes, indeed. So let's talk about the, the, the mining space, mining industry. So it's what was the biggest challenge that you see in the mining industry as a whole? You know, what, 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 what do you think so? Gilbert, I, I actually see three challenges and they're the same the same three challenges that we've always faced just every year the answers are different but the three challenges are how do we get access to land to explore on how do we get access to capital to spend on that exploration and how do we get access to good people to find mines and operate those mines okay in, in, indeed so how about Canada being in PDA, of course, Canada being the, one of the major players in the mining industry. How does Canada maintain its um, 
competitive advantage uh, over the others, at least in the mining space? Well, one of the competitive advantages that uh, we have in Canada is that the government's recognized, oh, early in the, uh, I think it was the late 1990s, actually, they recognized that uh, flow-through shares were a useful financing tool. And uh, what, what, one example of this is that uh, you, you, when you look at, uh, uh, say, the uh, Australians, they, they have raised money on the Australian market that, and they spend more money looking in Canada. So clearly the, the government's uh, policies have helped make Canada a more attractive place uh, than, than many other jurisdictions in the world. So gov government financial programs is one answer to your question. Yes. So uh, to, uh, in, to summarize this interview, at the end, so your house of life being in, as the president of EDAC, because you've been involved with the organization quite a lot in the past. And what's the difference between now that you are the president? Well, this is the huge <laughs> difference because when I was first uh, on the board of the PDAC in the late 1980s, we decided that our uh, membership was declining and maybe what we should do is go international and they're building this thing called the Metro Toronto Convention Center across the street. Yeah. Why don't we move over to there? Yeah. And now they built this convention center. It's been so successful. We're in the newly added part of it. Yeah. And so I'm, uh, what I'm living is the dream we had in the late 1980s. Yes, indeed. And now easily we have over 20,000 people yes. from all over the world coming into 130 this 130 countries. Yes, right. indeed. Thank you for your time here with us, Wade. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you, Tyler.